Hello and welcome to the Mid-Year Freakout Tag. This tag was originally created by Chemi, a booktuber who no longer has a channel. I'm not sure why or what happened. But I did see this tag on Book Chat with Pat last week, and I decided it would be an interesting one to do, even though I'm not freaking out. I'm well ahead of my reading goals and plans. For Goodreads, I finished my challenge weeks ago. I had set a goal of 50 books, and so far I'm at 60 plus, so I'm definitely doing well there. I set my goal lower than normal because I tend to get all stressed out about reaching it and then reading doesn't become fun. I'm picking books to finish the goal. So I've learned to set that lower. I'm at 13 out of 24 books in the banned book reading challenge of reading 24 in 2024. So I'm well ahead of the game on that. And I've been doing well in terms of participating in book events, so it's all good. But I really found these questions interesting, and it's a great way to review what you've been reading so far. Before I get to the prompts, I have three piles of books beside me. Fingers crossed, Panther is going to leave them in three piles, not like when I was setting them up here, but I see my sweet boy is now sleeping in his mason jar box in the kitchen. Number one, the best book you've read in 2024. I actually have two because I couldn't pick which one. And if you've seen my videos, you know I read a wide range of things. And this book tag will certainly show you some examples of that. One of the books that I've picked for this is The Earth Path, Grounding Your Spirit in the Rhythms of Nature. And this is by Starhawk. She's the author of The Spiral Dance. And I met Starhawk and the work The Spiral Dance when I was completing a religious studies course for my degree in university. She's an author I very much enjoy, not just because she writes about nature and earth spirituality. She's just a very grounded individual. She has a channel here on YouTube if you'd like to check out more about her. I enjoyed this book because it focuses on topics like permaculture, being mindful when you're gardening and moving through this life about how we are connected to nature and how important it is to live in harmony with nature. The second book, because it came in as a tie with The Earth Path, I've had this book for years and I just read it. It's Designed for Growth, 12 Steps for Adult Children, and this is by Veronica Ray. Now, if you're familiar with the 12-step programs like Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous, and there are so many others out there now. But way back when I worked in social services, it was basically AANA, and it goes through the 12-step program. It gives inspiring and motivating examples as well as the questions and exercises to do for yourself. It was perfect timing, and yes, I do need to start. That will definitely be coming up, and I've had this for oh, probably 30 years, <laughs> is 12 Steps and 12 Traditions. This is also from Alcoholics Anonymous. This is a book that will forever stay in my library, not just because it's part of the 12-step program, but because on the inside, it is signed by one of my former clients, Bill, <laughs> and it was a very heartfelt gift. So if you haven't figured it out yet, yes, there is a reason 
that AA means a lot to me. I used to go to meetings with my clients. It isn't what personally made the difference in my life, but, and we each have to find what works for us. But I definitely appreciated being able to go to meetings with the clients and having conversations with them. And it also helped them knowing that I had come on the other side so we could have great conversations without even going to meetings. So this book is precious to me for so many reasons. Prompt number two, best sequel you've read this year. For me, it was Skinwalkers at the Pentagon. It was also a surprise. I didn't realize it was a part two. This is by James T. Lackitsky. Hope I said that right. Column A. Kelleher and George Knapp. Now this, as you may guess from the title, also involves the ranch in Utah, as well as the government investigations and other things. This is an insider's account of the secret government UFO program. It was a fascinating read, and it's the sequel because it's part two from Hunt for the Skinwalker, which I just read last year. Science confronts the unexplained at a remote ranch in Utah. Now, this one is by Column A. Kelleher and George Knapp. Column was one of the scientists at the ranch. George Knapp is a journalist, I believe, in Las Vegas. I think I'm remembering that correctly. And I'm pretty sure he still appears on TV and is involved in different investigations and things. So I picked this up this year. I'd read Hunt for Skinwalker last year. And this really clarified some of the things that came up in the other book. And I'll be doing a video on those in the future. And in August, I'll be talking about UFOs and many other things. And Enzo will be appearing with me on August the 1st at 3 p.m. That's a Thursday for my live stream where we'll be chatting about UFOs, the books that I've read, the books that Enzo's read. And he's been into this for decades. He's a guest on a number of live streams. So I'm really looking forward to that. Prompt number three, a new release you haven't read. <laughs> for me, that would be all of them because I'm not one who typically reads newer books. Prompt number four, most anticipated for the second half of 2024. Now, there's a number of books that I could have picked for this, but the one that stood out, and it was from one of my latest book hauls, is DMT, The Spirit Molecule. This will also connect in with UFOs, alien abductions, and so many other topics that I look at. This is based on the research done by Dr. Straussman from 1990 to 1995 it was at the University of New Mexico in which he injected 60 volunteers with DMT, one of the most powerful psychedelics known. His detailed account of those sessions is an extraordinarily riveting inquiry into the nature of the human mind and the therapeutic potential of psychedelics. DMT, a plant-derived chemical that's also manufactured by the human brain, consistently produced near-death and mystical experiences. Many volunteers reported convincing encounters with intelligent, non-human presences, especially aliens. Nearly all felt that the sessions were among the most powerful experiences of their lives. So I'm very interested in reading about this. Prompt number five, biggest disappointment of 2024. And this one truly makes me sad. Classic Victorian and Edwardian ghost stories. I started it November 28, 2023. 
So this is one of my outstanding books from that pile. And if you've seen my other videos, I'm very much into ghost stories. What made this a bit of a difficult read for me is that there were stories that don't even have ghosts in them. So I don't know what they're doing in a ghost story book. Prompt number six, biggest surprise of 2024. I actually have two that fall into that category. The one I've mentioned before, Harry Potter, Narnia, and The Lord of the Rings. What you need to know about fantasy books and movies. This is by Richard Abanes. When I initially picked this book up at my local thrift store, because as I've mentioned, I've been involved with the banned book challenge and going down a spiral with that, I didn't really expect this to be as positive as it is. But as it says on the back, this author presents a very balanced viewpoint. He is not into banning books or burning books or anything like that. He makes excellent points. He also touches on the Dark Trilogy by Philip Pullman. There is a lot of really good information in this book, and I will in the future be doing a summary about what he covers. The other surprise was Around the World in 80 Days. This is by Jules Verne, and it's from my box set collection that included five of his stories. Although I found some of his other stories just a little too technical for me with numbers and all of that stuff, he's far more science-based than H.G. Wells. But I have to say, I very much enjoyed this read. It wasn't what I expected. It keeps you going, and I managed to read it in a couple of days. New favorite author of the year goes to Michael Shermer. This is another book I found during one of my thrift store travels. Why People Believe Weird Things, Pseudoscience, Superstition, and other confusions of our time. I have to say, I've never heard of this author until I picked up this book. It was the subject that interested me, and I very much enjoyed the read. I liked the way he presented his material, the different things that he covered, and again, I'll be talking about him more in the future. Number eight, newest fictional crush. I'm sorry, but until I meet a character like Dean Winchester again, there's not going to be a new one for a long time. And just to be clear, I'm sorry, Jensen Ackles. Yes, I did watch the first season of The Boys and some of season two, and then I was done. It's just not my thing. I know there's a lot of people out there who enjoy it, but nope. Even with Jensen Ackles in season three, I haven't seen an episode. So it's definitely Dean Winchester that has my interest. <laughs> A new favorite character? I don't typically read mysteries, but this year I was involved in March Mystery Madness, where for the first time I read the Scarpetta Collection, two of the novels by Patricia Cornwell. And I also read Kathy Reich's The Bone Code. Now, I watched the series Bones from beginning to end. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the characters of Temperance and of Booth. But I have to say, I enjoy the Temperance in this book more than I enjoyed the Temperance on the show. A book that made you cry. There are two of them. And they're also why I still have yet to do my book summaries about the books that I've read for the Band Book Challenge. The first book is Go Ask Alice. It was a book that I read as a teenager, and I am appalled that anyone would ban that book and deny access to teenagers. For me, it was instrumental in the choices that I made as a teenager and why I stayed away from drugs. 
Sadly, I can't say the same for some of my friends, and some of them are no longer here. Mm -hmm. The other book in this category is Looking for Alaska. When I worked as an educational assistant, Looking for Alaska was one of the books that our students were allowed to pick as a novel study. So, and because I read the books that my students were working on, I had an opportunity to read Looking for Alaska. It was an amazing read. I, again, I can't believe that people would deny access to that book. It talks about teenagers, the challenges of going to a new school, making friends, choices that teenagers make. Why did these two books make me cry? Number one, in Go Ask Alice, our character does not survive. She keeps making promises that she's going to change her life. She had a loving, supportive family, and it just didn't work out. And that, as someone who has worked with people dealing with addictions, I can tell you, as heartfelt and honest as their promise is to not go back, it doesn't always turn out that way. And the tragic reality is, sometimes they die. Sadly, in my life, I have known people who, unfortunately, like Alice, are no longer here. So revisiting that book wasn't just revisiting Alice and the choices that I'd made as a teenager. It was remembering those who are no longer here with me. Looking for Alaska wasn't just about revisiting the story there and teenagers. And again, sadly, we have one who does not survive. But it also brought back memories of the school where I worked, where unfortunately, due to some very poor decision making by various individuals, that school is no longer open. The other challenge with revisiting this book is that it also reminded me of a very beautiful young woman who we said goodbye to in June, nine years ago. She was 19 years old and for reasons we will never know, chose to leave this world. I'll talk more about Julie when I cover the book summaries. Prompt number 11. A book that made you happy. For me, that was politically correct holiday stories, and I'll be featuring some of these on my channel come December. This is by James Finn Garner, and it was published in 1995. Mm -hmm. It is the third book to my collection of politically correct bedtime stories. Thank you so much to my husband. I got the first two of these for one of our anniversaries a few years ago. They're all by James Finn Garner. They crack me up, not only when I first read them, and they were a little more politically correct back then, but James Finn Garner also mentions in the introduction to one of his books that he doesn't believe that they will continue to be politically correct in a future time. And in 2024, sadly, he is correct. There are probably a few things in his stories that some would disagree with. I'm not one of them. They still make me laugh. And that's sometimes what you need. They're also nice short reads. So if you're looking for a good chuckle, and you're not too stressed out about actually being politically correct, I definitely recommend checking out his works. Favorite book to movie adaptation? I decided to stick with 2024 and what I just read. So for me, and this was a first time read, although I've read a number of Stephen King books, I just read The Dark Half, and as luck would have it, we also had the movie on Prime. So I watched the movie the same time I was reading the book. Stephen King's novels have usually done well as movie adaptations. 
The Shining was outstanding. I haven't seen Salem's Lot. I have to find that one, but I loved that novel. Prompt number 13, favorite video this year. I decided to break this into two parts. So number one, a video that I've seen in 2024. I would pick Dracula Untold. That stars Luke Evans as Vlad Sepesh. I've enjoyed a number of different Dracula movies, but I have to say Dracula Untold is definitely my favorite because it tends to stay truer to the actual history of that time period and what Vlad had to face. Not the vampire aspect, that's the Bram Stoker twist on it, but in terms of the actual Vlad Sepesh, Prince of Wallachia, and the time period that he was in, which is the 1400s. For those who don't know, Vlad and his brother Radu actually were given to the Turks as hostages by his father because of various things that were going on during that time between the Ottoman Empire, hung Hungary, and Romania. It was a very different time period that having to give the son to someone else wasn't fictional makeup to get the story moving. That was actually part of Vlad's reality. In terms of what I've put up on my channel, it's really hard, um, especially since I've been doing my silly kids because there's so many memories that come up. I've included the kids who are no longer with us. So I guess I would have to say sharing Shadow Story, Panther's Brother, as difficult as that was to do. I'm glad that his story is now up there and will stay up there in Cybird for however long it does. But I'm also proud of the video that I did about the feral colony, which Shadow and Panther were a part of before we took them in. And I'm very proud of my husband and the two shelters that I feature there that he built for them, as well as being able to tell the stories of that feral colony. Number 14, the most beautiful book you've read this year. There have been a number of them between amazing covers, amazing stories, but I would have to pick Ask the Angels by Rosemary Ellen Guiley. And I only know about this author because earlier I had read Talking to the Dead by George Newry and Rosemary Ellen Guiley. I found her book again at my local thrift store. It says How to Bring Angelic Wisdom into Your Life. I love the cover. It's soft and it's puffy. It's, it has beautiful angels. On the back it says, Whether their presence takes the form of a disembodied voice, a divine light, a mysterious stranger or an invisible guardian, angels have always participated in human affairs. Enlightening, practical, and inspiring, Ask the Angels is the perfect book for people longing to talk with their angels and open up to angelic guidance and wisdom in their everyday lives. It was a book that I very much enjoyed. Yes, I do believe in angels and so many other things. And this book definitely has wonderful information. If you're having a difficult or challenging day, she has meditation exercises at the book for the different angels you may want to connect with, whether that's hope, love, or creativity. Number 15. What book do you need to read before the end of the year? For me, that will be. The Book of Signs, this is by Dr. David Jeremiah, 31 Undeniable Prophecies of the Apocalypse. Ooh, sounds ominous. Yes, I'm being sarcastic because no, I do not 
believe we're coming to the apocalypse. I'm not into that whole end time, scare the carp out of you kind of person. So why am I interested in reading the book of signs? Because I just started The God Delusion by Richard Dawkins. If you've seen some of my other videos, you know I like to read opposing viewpoints because to me, they're food for thought. It doesn't mean I have to agree with them. It just means it gives me something to think about. Richard Dawkins is saying there is no God. Here, Dr. David Jeremiah is saying there's a book of signs and the end times are coming. I'll be very interested to see what both of these authors have to say. Like I say, opposing viewpoints, I've mentioned both of these before. We have Paranormality, Why We Believe the Impossible. This is by Professor Richard Weissman with, yes, a piece on the front. Weisman daftly skewers the paranormal charlatans, blows away the psychic fog, and lets in the clear light of reason. Richard Dawkins. And again, I'm sorry, but no, he didn't. I've read it. I'm halfway through the second read. And he did not convince me that the paranormal is all bunk. The book I read after was The Afterlife Frequency, The Scientific Proof of Spiritual Contact and How That Awareness Will Change Your Life. This is by Mark Anthony. The foreword is by Gary E. Schwartz, a scientist who has done different studies. I believe Mark Anthony may have been in one of his studies. I know John Edwards wasn't but Gary Schwartz is mentioned in John Edwards' book, Crossing Over. See again, connection, connection, connection. So like I say, I'm someone who believes in reading opposing viewpoints because that's the best way to learn, grow, expand your mind. It's also a great way to review why do I believe certain things that I do some authors will get me to look at and think about things differently. Others, I already know Richard Dawkins is not going to convince me that God or a creative source or whatever name you have does not exist. But I'm still curious to read what his thoughts are about it because there may be some things that I find of interest. Prompt number 16 is to tag other people. So, as always, because I know she enjoys doing these, I am going to tag Janie at The Crafting Bookworm, and I will leave it up to anyone watching this video who would like to participate in this. Please, by all means. I'm not sure how long this is going to end up when I'm done editing. I'm looking down right now, and I'm at an hour and two minutes, so it Definitely won't be that long. Don't know if I'll end up having to do it as a two-parter because if you've seen my videos, I babble <laughs> and I make connections and now and again I get off topic, but hopefully it isn't going to be too long in the final edit. Until next time, take good care.